The Lord is a father. He's a father who cares. And today we're gathered here to worship him and give him the glory and honor that he deserves. I learned this phrase when I started my new job. My boss is a fellow Christian, fellow believer. And I was talking to him once and he said this phrase. He said, the Lord God is a father. And I remember that. And it's something that I wanted to talk about today. Our Father's love. And I wanted to read two passages. And the first one is this. It's written in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we would be called children of God, and such we are. And Matthew seven eleven, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, Give what is good to those who ask him. Last year or two sometime, I began to pray and ask the Lord, God, show me your love. And as the months went on, I was convicted to change that prayer to something a little more correct. I began to pray, Father, show me the depths of your love, for I'm too blind to see them. I was struggling to see God's love for me. Or maybe I should say I was too ignorant to see it. I was led to understand why, in my mind, I wasn't worthy of his love because I haven't done something out of the ordinary, something extraordinary to earn his love. I understood that salvation is by grace through faith alone, but once I've believed, I thought that I needed to keep his love, to keep his favor towards me. Maybe I didn't preach it, maybe I didn't say it, but for sure I lived it out. Fast forward this to this year, the beginning of the year, my wife and I attended marriage camp for the first time. The speakers, Zach and Amy, which a lot of you have probably met at the um, ice cream social and probably heard them speak, they had an interesting story, and I don't know if they said this story, but I will, wanted to give an abridged version of that story. Zach and Amy have four kids, two of which are adopted. Zach is a pastor on a pastor's salary, and they had a sedan, and all four kids couldn't fit in there. So they began to pray, and they began to pray for a bigger car, a specific car. They told their church about this prayer, and all of a sudden, a couple from their church shows up at their doorstep. If I remember this correctly, they drove them to, the dealer, to a dealership, traded in their truck to get Zach and Amy an SUV. And I thought, what an amazing story. Yeah, but it's not the only one I've heard that's similar to this. I've heard pastors and missionaries preach on this and tell stories that their teams are trying to collect funds to go on, on a missionary trip somewhere. And they, hadn't, they didn't have enough money. And they began to pray, and then someone showed up on their doorstep with the exact dollar amount that they needed. And it was, pro, it was the most unexpected person to do that. Or maybe when they were already on the way to that Tri on the trip, there, wasn't, there weren't enough seats for everybody on the team. So they began to pray, and all of a sudden, a seat opened up, or two seats opened up, or they were able to catch a flight half an hour later or an hour later. And some stories I've even heard that because they overbooked the plane, they upgraded one of the team members to first class. I thought, wow. What a story. I knew that God was powerful enough and strong enough to do these kind of things. I've heard them before and I knew and I believed that, but I thought miracles only happen in other people's lives, not mine. And why not mine? Well, it was obvious to me because I haven't done anything out of the or or extraordinary, anything out of the ordinary to earn his favor, to earn his love in my life. 
I was no pastor, especially no pastor who adopted two kids. That pastor must have earned high praise and favor from God, is what I thought. Same with missionary teams. I was not part of one. They, they obviously, those who go on missions trips, they'll, they'll, they'll see miracles. They go there to help the orphans, the widows, the poor, but most importantly, to save souls, to preach the gospel. Of course, the Lord would answer them. They have done something or are doing something to earn more of God's love and his favor towards them. And I thought the same goes to anyone who does things like this. Miracles happen to those who go above and beyond to earn his favor. Some time passes after that camp, and the phrase, the Lord is a father, began to marinate and settle into my mind and heart. The Lord is a father who cares. He wants to hear about our worries, about our hurts, about our needs, about everything. At my job, I meet with my boss once a week to do ongoing training, talk about the business, and so on. After we finished our meeting one of these weeks, he said, Ed, wait here, I'll be right back. I thought he was going to grab more things, another project to give me. But then he sits down and hands me an envelope. And I thought, what is this? He says, I don't want you to open it. Not right now. Maybe when you get into your car, when you go home. He said, my wife and I have been praying and asking for the Lord to guide us towards someone we can bless. And he has guided us towards you. And as I felt the envelope, it felt like there was some money in there. And I was really confused. And he said, well, you have a baby on the way. I'm pretty sure you can use this. I was in shock at first. The first thought that came to mind was, what have I done that he should give me anything? More so, what have I done that the Lord should lead him towards me to bless me with even a little bit? Why, Lord? That month, before he handed that to me, I was still settling into my new role at work. I worked longer hours. My prayer life wasn't the best. My service and ministry wasn't the best. Reading wasn't the best. I began to think about all the things I have not done or have not been doing that I should have earned this favor from the Lord and receive anyone, uh, help from anyone or received any favor from anyone. Later, in a deeper way, I saw the greater meaning of the phrase, the Lord is a father. I saw his provision in our lives as we were blindsided by some medical bills and some other bills. And the amount that he, my boss, has given me was able to cover most of it and majority of it. And I was stunned. And I had a greater realization of God's love and care for me as my eyes began to unveil and my heart and my mind began to understand the love that God has for us. But it didn't stop there. I continued in my vain attempts to earn God's love or even pay for what he already blessed me with. But as love didn't stop there, on June 3rd at 4.35 p.m., my daughter was born. When I first saw her, I thought, movies lie. Because in movies, they're born round-headed and pink. But when she was born, she was a bit cone-headed and blue. And I thought, oh, I really fought hard to see how cute she was. About two minutes later, all of a sudden, she was still blue, and we probably heard the scariest words we've ever heard in our lives so far. She's not breathing. 
She ended up swallowing a bunch of fluids, and she wasn't breathing. They brought her over to the station they prepared for her. Later, the doctors and other people told me that, hey, this is a common thing that happens to a lot of kids. They swallow up a bunch of fluids. Later that night, in intensive care, a couple more babies came in with the same situation. But in that moment, when it was all happening, I didn't think, oh, this is a common thing, she'll be okay. What I thought was she's not breathing. Especially when all of a sudden, nurses rush in, doctors rush in, everybody's trying to resuscitate her, and then I hear the words again, she's still not breathing. I ran over to my wife, I tried to keep my composure, but I couldn't. The only thing that went through my mind was the words of the man who was standing on the side of the road, the blind man, and when he heard Jesus coming, he yelled, have mercy on me, son of God. The only words that came out of my mouth at the time was, have mercy on me, O God. And he did. Because about 10 seconds later, we heard the best sound ever, we heard her cry. They took her to intensive, the intensive care unit for newborns. And then as if the floodgates of his blessings opened up and began to pour out, people were messaging us, calling us with support and prayers Here's the problem that we had. People were bringing us so much food that we actually gained a few pounds that week at the hospital. They were bringing us so much food that we couldn't keep up eating it that we had to start throwing it away because it was going bad. One night as I sat there, staring at my daughter, replaying, probably not the healthiest thing to do, but I was replaying that day where I heard the word, she's not breathing, as I thought about that, thought came into my mind, two minutes into her life, and I already cared and loved her so much. Why? Why did I love her so much? She hasn't done anything to impress me. She hasn't done anything to earn my love. She didn't necessarily look very cute either when she was just born. So why? Why? And then the Holy Spirit began to bring this meditation to this passage. 1 John 3, 1. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. People always say children are a blessing. I believe that phrase, but I could never fully understand how and why until that night. I sat there, I was remembering this verse, And I began to understand the love that God has for us. I began to understand a little more of that unconditional love, of that sacrificial love that he has for us. Now, I know she's still only five weeks old, and people are going to say, well, trust me, that love is only going to be tested and grow more as they become teenagers and begin to show you attitude and get into trouble. What does every parent say? Not my child, they'll be perfect. But as I sat there, I began to think, God simply loves me because I am his child. There are no conditions to this love. I thought, if I can love my daughter like this simply because she's my child, how much more does a perfect and holy Father in heaven, love us. I began remembering everything that happened this year, in the years prior. And I began to think, oh, how great a love the Father has bestowed on me simply because I am his child. As I was sitting there, I grew deeper and deeper in the knowledge and the grace of who God is. And it all began to lead me back to the cross. And suddenly, 
the gospel started making more sense to me more than it, than it ever did before. Because that's where the fullness of his love was displayed. As the days went on, I began to continue to meditate on this. And he brought me to Matthew 17. The Lord brought me to Matthew 17, and that thought crossed my mind. If I, being so perfect, can love my daughter so much, how much more does the Father in heaven love us? And then again, the gospel began to make more sense. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's how much. The fullness of his love is the gospel displayed on the cross. He gave a son that we might not be cast aside, cast away into eternal punishment, but by faith be brought into new life. And have we done something to earn it? No. The Apostle Paul makes this very clear in Romans 5.8. He says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Then again in Ephesians 2, 4 through 5, he says, but God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even even when we were dead in our sins, made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Was there anything I did to earn it? No. There is nothing cute about us, there was nothing cute about us being dead in our sins. Yet because of his great love, because of his great mercy toward us, because the Lord is a father who loves us deeply and cares for us, he sent his only son to be crucified and endure the wrath of the father on that cross. He died on that cross for me and for you while we were still dead in our sins, living in them and indulging in them. He gave us a chance to become children of God, to become his children, to be graded into his family. And oh, what a love he bestows and pours out on his children. He has loved us with an everlasting love. He has loved us with an unfailing love. He has loved us with an unconditional and a sacrificial love because the Lord is a father. If you have not experienced this kind of love, run to him. Run to him and taste and see how good it is. Taste and see the love that the father has for you. If you are a child of God by faith in Christ, Know that he loves you with a perfect love. There's nothing more we can do to make him love us more. There's nothing less we can do to make him love us less. We do good works not to earn his love, but to show the love that he has showed us to others. That is what he has called us to. And today I'd like to encourage everybody one more time with this verse. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God, and such we are. Let us pray.